It's Andre for the High Performance Academy and I'm here with Mike from OBR who are a producer of high-end aftermarket engine management systems. Now it's not a brand that we're particularly familiar with on our side of the world but in professional motorsport leagues the OBR product is fairly well known. So Mike, what sort of uh, markets are you focusing on with the OBR product? Um, I guess we work with GT class cars, GT3, uh, LMPs, so we do a lot with Judd racing engines with, uh, you know, Le Mans prototypes. Uh, we do rally, we do formula cars, pretty much anything, anything. So these really are high-end products and we're not so likely to have seen them in the usual road car or your club level car? Um, the ECUs, you may see them in road cars such as Lotuses, but that is the OE versions of them because they're made for, by EFI in Italy. Um, but yes, you would see them in, I don't know, GT championships worldwide, um, touring car championships, things like that. Let's talk a little bit about the, the range. I've got some specific questions I want to get into, but first of all, can you just tell us uh, what the range of products OBR produce are? So we do our own power control modules, membrane switch panels, all cam based, so you can achieve quite a high level of programmability. It's all open as well, so there's no limit limitations on CAN. Um, some of them have data logging in, and then we go to the ECUs. We can run direct injection engines up to 12 cylinders. So you really have uh, got everything covered in that respect. One of the, the interesting parts I wanted to talk to you about was uh, the paddle shift integration. Now, on motorsport applications, that's becoming more prevalent these days. Cars are, are being fitted with these gearboxes with paddle shift, and it's basically a seamless shifting technology where the driver doesn't need to use the clutch to yeah. upshift and basically pull the paddle, keep your foot pin on the accelerator, and, uh, and basically the computer controls everything. Now, could you tell us a little bit about, first of all, what is required in order to make that, that paddle shift shift happen? Um, we work only with pneumatic systems really. We have controlled some of the electronic shift systems in the past, but really it's just pneumatics now. So you have your valve blocks to control the air. We actually blip throttles with um, our ETB controller in the ECU. So. Excuse me, e ETB? So electronic throttle body. So, normally so you're using the electronic throttle yeah. body to Instead open? A third valve, which you so if a car doesn't have an electronic throttle, then you have three valves, but if it does, you just need two up and down. Um, you then take the gear position of the barrel from a potentiometer. We input that into the ECU, so we know obviously where we are in gears. We can then uh, have programmable cut levels. We can either cut ignition or fuel, or a mixture of both, or we actually just retard ignition as well. That, that can help with a smoother shift. And just for, for our audience out there who don't, um, aren't familiar with this technology, now we're talking about a, a dog engagement gearbox in a racing application. So for the, uh, the dog engagement gearbox to be able to release the current gear and move up a gear, it needs uh, some way of, of reducing the engine power being delivered. That's correct? Yes, yeah, yeah. So we can preload and then perform the actual cut and then it's into the next gear. So that power cut that you're talking about, that's where you're talking about, you've got the option of doing it either via an ignition cut, a fuel cut, or a combination of both? Yeah, and an, an ignition retard as well. So it's up to preference of the engineer sometimes. Uh, ignition retard, retard is uh, maybe smoother. Um, it depends really. If the engine builder wants to do a fuel cut and not an ignition cut, um, we, we can do, we are sem really, so. Now, in the, in the early systems that were common, we were seeing basically an open loop system for these, these gear change ignition cuts. So the ECU wasn't actually monitoring so much the um, gear position, if you like, and it was just doing a cut that was yeah. time-based. Now, most of the ECU manufacturers have moved to a closed loop system. Can you tell me how that works? Um, so we take the, the reading from the gear pot, so you can, um, and then you, you put in a, an actual cut timer um, so if your uh, gear change is over that cut timer, it goes into like an open loop cut. So it's just a standard default cut. But with the closed loop, you can obviously shorten the gear times down. So as soon as, uh, you know, the ECU sees that the next gear is engaged, so it, you know, brings back in the power. Um, so you can have a, a shorter cut. 
So as well as the potential for a shorter cut, are you seeing an improvement in gearbox reliability using that closed loop system when compared to an open loop system? Yeah, we have done. We've seen, that, um, obviously you can protect the gearbox from any over revs, um, any times, uh, you know, if a driver has his foot on the throttle still, especially during a, a downshift, you know, you, you can protect the engine that way. And, and gearboxes have, have seen increased life, yeah. So that's been, been beneficial. Okay. So talking about, uh, that's the upshift side of things, talking about getting the, the engine to downshift, obviously in traditional methods the driver's physically blipping the throttle yeah. to match revs and you've said you're using the electronic throttle body to yeah. do that. Is the driver need to use the clutch on the downshift or is that all just done automatically as well? No, he just, he just uh, it blips, it disengages the dogs and then he goes down the gear. Uh, we also have some ignition cuts there as well for anti-push as well So because sometimes you can get pushed on into corners if uh, he's downshifting quickly. So just to, to elaborate my, my own understanding of it, you're timing that all fairly accurately. It, it must move the gear position out of the current engaged gear, then activate the throttle blip before it moves into the, the lower gear. Is that correct? Yes, you probably activate. You have sort of a preload and then you will have a blip which then disengages and you're, it's, it's pretty quick straight into the next gear. If you look at a, a data trace, you can see, um, that would probably be the best to show you really, you can see exactly when it, it shifts. So. In terms of getting the engineers to set this up or the tuners to set this up, is it a fairly involved um, operation tuning a closed loop uh, gear shift system? Um, not, it's not too bad, it's not as bad as you think. We would send out um, quite good base configurations, uh, you would obviously have to program your uh, gear voltages from the from the uh, potentiometer but you would have a system that would be able to go up and down the gears and go out and test shakedown you know immediately it's then you know refining timers cuts um, the way you, where you do things like that yeah and on a properly set up system with a, a, a really high end gearbox that will shift quickly what sort of shift times are you typically seeing on an upshift um, Upshifts are always quicker than downs. We're in, oh, I don't know, 30 milliseconds maybe on a really good one. Or oh, maybe less. Downshift is uh, a bit longer because obviously you have a blip as well. And That's seriously quick though. What, what would that look like in comparison to a conventional manual shift with a dog engagement gearbox? Normally you would have on them, with a normal sequential with a lever, you'd probably have a cut time of, 70, 80 or 90 milliseconds really, you'd, um, but maybe you'd leave it a bit longer for some drivers if they're not. A professional driver is always quicker than, you know, like a, an amateur guy or a semi-pro, so. So we're talking about a system that makes the, the shift quicker, so yeah. the car's under power for, for a longer period of time, the driver can keep both hands on the wheel so it's safer, and on top of that we're also seeing an improvement in gearbox reliability. Yes, yeah, and obviously engine protection as well, so with over revs and um, etc. like that, so it is a, it's a good, uh, good system to, to use. It's, um, it's a really interesting system, Mike. Thanks for talking to us about that today. Yeah, no problem, thanks. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.